Hi everyone, in this lesson we're going to go over piecewise defined functions. And so we start off with a definition right here for what a piecewise defined function is. And it's when a function is defined by different equations on different parts of its domain. So if we, I have a, an example right here pulled up. This is an example of a piecewise defined function. <clears throat> now this one has three different equations. You have a linear function right here with a negative slope. Right here we have a quadratic function that is upside down and so we can see that because of that negative right out front so it's concave down. And then over here, we have another linear function with a positive slope. Now, all of our examples today are just going to have two equations, um, not three. But we can have three. You could have four or five. You could have as many functions as you want. And so you will see the different functions that you will have. And then you'll sh it will show over here where at on its domain will that function be behaving? So you can see right here from negative six to negative two, we have that linear function with a negative slope. And so you can see right here from negative six to negative two, you have that negative slope. Then you can see right here from negative four, or sorry, negative two to four, we have our quadratic, and so you have negative two to four, you have your quadratic, and then again, from four to eight, you have your positive uh, linear function. <clears throat> okay, so this is an example of what a piecewise defined function can look like. So if we go over to our notes here, it says if f of x equals 2x plus 4 if, and I forgot an x right here, so this is if x is less than or equal to 1, and then x cubed minus 1 if x is greater than 1, we need to find f of 0, f of 1, and f of 5. So, <clears throat> If we start with f of 0, remember whatever's in parentheses is our x. And so if my x right here is 0, is that when x is less than or equal to 1 or when x is greater than 1, well, that's when x is less than or equal to 1. So we'll be using this top function. So we will have 2 times 0 plus 4. 0 times anything is 0, and so we get 4. So then we go on to the next one, when f equals 1. Well, notice that they both have a 1 in it, but the 1 where it equals 1 is this top one again, right? This says if x is less than or equal to one. And so because it does equal one, we'll use the top one again. So we've got two times one plus four. Two times one is two plus four is six. And then lastly, f of five. And now f of five is greater than one. And so because what my x is right here, my 5 is greater than 1, we'll use this bottom one. So now I have 5 cubed minus 1, which is 121 minus 1, so 124. Okay, so that's how you evaluate. <clears throat> the majority of this lesson, though, is going to be graphing. So example two, we have if the function is defined as f of x equals two, if x is greater than or equal to negative two, and negative three, if x is greater than negative two. So part A, we need to graph the function. Part B, we will find f of negative, uh, negative three and f of two, and then state the domain of the function. Okay, so when I graph, 
if I just pay attention to this portion right here first. This tells me f of x equals two, and remember f of x equals is just another name for y, right? So we have y equals two if my x is less than or equal to negative two. So here is where my graph is at negative two. So that means I'm going to have one graph over here on this side of my negative two, and then I'm gonna have a different graph over here when it equals two, or when it's on the other side of negative two. Okay, so y equals two. This is a horizontal line. So I'm going to go over here to 2, and my graph will go like that. Let me see if I can make that a little bit better. There we go. Okay, and then... This one right here is f of x equals negative three. And again, f of x is the same as y. So when y equals negative three, if x is greater than negative two. So I will go over here to negative three and This one, because it is only greater than and not greater than or equal to negative two, I'm gonna have a nice open circle there. And again, see if I can make that a little bit better. There we go. <clears throat> and so there is my graph. So now, that's my part A, I have graphs. So now for part B, I need to find f of negative three and f of two. We pay attention to the domain when I'm solving these. When f of is negative three, remember this is my x. So which criteria is that meeting as far as my domain? Well, that is this first one right here. My x is less than or equal to negative two because negative three is less than negative two. And when my domain is less than or equal to negative two, my y simply equals two. And you can also look at that from your graph. Here is where my x is negative three. I have no graph below that. But if we were to go up, here's where my graph is, and it's right here at two. So you can also use the graph now that we have it to answer that question. So likewise, we have f of two. Well, now that is in this domain because my x is greater than negative two, and when my x is greater than two, my y is negative three. And again, you can use the graph to answer that. If you come over here to when x is two, I have no graph above, but if I go down below, here is my point and what is my y value? It is negative three. So whether you use the graph or the function, you get the same answer. And then lastly, state the domain. 
You can do this one or two ways. The way we have always done domain in this class is by using the graph. So if you use the graph, and remember domain is from left to right. So if this is my pencil, you go from left to right on your graph. The first thing we hit is the arrow. So that means negative infinity. As you keep sliding, I do have at least one point right here with negative two, right? And so this is how you know it still meets that vertical line test. It's still a function. Even though you technically have, quote, two points right there, you have one solid and one open, meaning that you don't have the same point when you've got x equals negative two. And then you keep sliding this over and it goes to an arrow so you get positive infinity right there. So your domain is all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. And you can also see that by simply looking at the domain right here. The first one has when x is less than or equal to negative 2. And then the bottom one is when x is greater than negative 2, meaning it's going to cover every number. Okay, let's keep going. We have three more examples of graphing functions. So now we need to graph this one. And since it's not going to be horizontal lines, we actually need to make some t-charts. So I have y equals negative x plus 2, and we'll make a t-chart with it. And then we have y equals x plus 4, and we'll make a t-chart with it. All right, so the important number from this graph here is this 1. So one needs to go in both of these spots as the first number. That means right here where x is one, you're gonna have some graph over here and you're gonna have a different graph over here. That one right there is where my two graphs split. So, in this first one, if it is when x is greater than or equal to 1, I need another couple numbers in here with when x is greater than or equal to 1. So that could be 2 and 3. You really only need one other point, but to kind of get a better graph, I like to do another point or two. <clears throat> and because this is greater than or equal to 1, I am going to make a little note over here that this needs to be a nice, solid, closed circle. So let's go ahead and find these points. When we plug in uh, 1, we will have negative 1 plus 2, so that will be 1. When I plug in negative, or when I plug in 2, that's negative 2 plus 2 for 0. And when I plug in 3, that's negative 3 plus 2 to get negative 1. So I'm going to plot those points, and we've got 1, 1 with a closed circle. We have 2, 0, and 3, negative 1. When we graph this, we're going to go from the first point through the last point. So it's going to keep going, and it's going to have an arrow. Okay, now let's do the second one here. So we already have one, and so let's look at our domain. It's when x is less than one. 
Notice that it is less than and not less than or equal to. So I'm gonna come over here. And I'm gonna do a nice open circle. At this point here. Because it is not less than or equal to, it does not include one, so we need an open circle. Okay, so now let's find some other points that we'll put in here. It's when it's less than one, so that would be zero and negative one. And so now plug in your points. We'll have one plus four to give me five. We'll have zero plus four for four, and negative one plus four for three. So plot those points. We will have an open circle at one five, but then at zero four, that's a closed circle, and at negative one three, that's also a closed circle. And we go from the first point through the rest of them. So this is my graph. So now part B, we need to find F of zero and we need to find F of three. Well, since I already have my graph, I can use it. When X is zero, this is my X, when X is zero, right up here, my Y is four. which we already have that point right here in our table. And when F is three, my Y is negative one, which we also already have that point in our table. And then state the domain. Again, if you use your ruler, your, your pencil, and you go from left to right of this graph, the first thing we hit is that, is that circle right there. And we keep going, and it looks like there's a, a break, but we at least have one point right here that has an X coordinate of one. So there's no break in our domain, and then the last thing we hit is an arrow. So our domain is negative infinity to infinity. And you can see that from that domain that we gave right here. It tells you every number that is less than one and every number that is greater than or equal to one, meaning we're talking about every number there. Okay. Example four, we're doing the same three things. So first we need to graph, and I will do that by making my charts. We have y equals negative three x, And so we'll make our t-chart and then y equals positive 3x and we'll make another t-chart. Okay, what is the important number that has to go in both of these t-charts? It's got to be this zero right here. So I know on the left side of this, it's gonna look like one thing. And then on the right side over here, it's gonna look like something else. But that is where my two graphs are going to break at. So both of these need a zero. Now this first one, when x, when we have negative three x, when x is greater than zero, we need two numbers that meet this criteria here. 
So two numbers that are greater than zero other than zero would be one and two. And because it is greater than and not greater than or equal to, I know I'm gonna have an open circle just right here. So plug in your values. When I have negative three times zero, that's zero. Negative three times one is negative three. And negative three times two is negative six. So let's plot that and that first point is gonna have an open circle right here at zero, zero. And then we will go one, negative three for a closed circle. And two, negative six is slightly off of our graph, but right here. So we go from the first point through the last point. And then we have when x is less than or equal to zero, we use our 3x function. So what are some numbers of when x is less than zero? Well, that would be negative one and negative two. So we have three times zero is zero. Three times negative one is negative three. And three times negative two is negative six. So because this is or equals two, we do know that this is going to be a closed circle right here. So at zero, zero, we already have that open circle from this first one. Now I'm simply just coloring it in. And then we'll have negative one, negative three, and negative two, negative six, so a little bit off our graph again. And so there is my graph. So B, I need to find F of one and F of negative two. F of one, we've already done from our T chart. That is negative three. And if we use our graph, you can see right there it is negative three. And f of negative two is right here. That's going to be negative six. And again, if we go over here to when x is negative two, and that's our negative six. And then C, the domain. When you use your pencil and you go from left to right, the first thing we hit is an arrow. The last thing we hit is also an arrow. So that's negative infinity to infinity. And you can also tell because we're talking about every number that is greater than zero and every number that is less than or equal to zero, meaning every number. Okay, our last example of graphing. We have y equals x minus three. And we have y equals x squared. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. What number needs to go in both of these charts right here? Okay, hopefully you say that one, meaning right here at one, you're gonna have one graph. And then over here to the left side of one, you're gonna have a different graph.
Okay. So let's keep filling out this chart. On this first one, we have when x is less than one. So two things there. Because this is less than, what does that tell me is gonna happen at one on this graph? That less than tells me that we need an open circle at this point. Okay, second thing, we can find other values that go in here that meet this criteria. When x is less than one, that would be zero and negative one would be some good other values to plug in. So when I plug in one, we've got one minus three is gonna give me negative two. We have zero minus three to give me negative three and negative one minus three for a negative four. So I'm going to plot those points. We'll have an open circle at 1, negative 2. And then 0, negative 3 is a closed. And negative 1, negative 4 is also closed. So from the first point through the other point. Okay, now let's fill out this table. Our criteria is when x is greater than or equal to one. So two things. What does this greater than or equal to tell me that's gonna happen at this point of one on this graph? Okay, it's gonna be a nice closed circle. And then find other values that are greater than or equal to one. So that would be two and three. So we have one squared is one, two squared is four, and three squared is nine. Now that one's not gonna fit on our graph, but that's okay. Okay, now this is the first time we've had something that wasn't linear. We have been dealing with squared up until well the la the first two lessons of this module those are your parabolas right they're going to be your u shaped so when i plot these points 1 1 with a closed circle 2 4 and if we wanted to that'd be 5 6 7 8 9 ish Okay, this is going to have kind of a curve to it. That doesn't look very curved, though, so does it? Let's try again. Kind of curved. I think that looks the exact same, but it should be curved. Okay, so part B. We need to find f of negative 1 and f of 2. f of negative 1 is right here, that's negative 4, and f of 2 is right here, that is 4. And you can also again use that graph, negative 1, you get 4, and 2, you get 4. And then see what is the domain. When we look at it right here, we're talking about every number that is less than one and every number that is greater than or equal to one. We're talking about all real numbers. But if you use the graph, as you go from left to right, the first thing you hit is an arrow. We at least have one point right here when x is 1 because of that closed circle. So then the last thing we hit is that arrow. So negative infinity to infinity. Now we have example 6 and it's a word problem. Um, 
I meant to change this before I printed it. And so I was going to give you a, um, a little sheet to tape over this problem in your notes. Class was canceled. I wasn't able to do that, but I don't want to do this problem. Um, I want to do this problem right here. So you can either write it down on a separate sheet of paper or just kind of pay attention. This is really here to help you with your homework. Okay, it's gonna be one of your homework questions. So it says, for non-extreme weather months, Plimto Electric charges uh, $7.10 plus 6.747 cents per kilowatt for customers using up to 1,200 kilowatts and charges $88.06 plus 5.788 cents per kilowatt above 1,200 for customers using more than 1,200 kilowatts. Part A, write the function that gives the monthly charge in dollars as a function of kilowatts per hour. And then part B and C, we will use the functions we just made in part A to determine the monthly charge if you use 960 kilowatts and five or 100, 580 kilowatts. So, Part A. <clears throat> so we will use this first part here that they charge seven dollars. No, oh, I thought I could write on this. I can't. That's annoying. Okay. Um I guess I'll have to do this. We will use this first part. Oh, that's exactly what I do. Okay. This first part here. Um, $7 plus 6.747 cents per kilowatts for customers using up to 12,000 kilowatts. So a little bit of a problem here. We need to find the function wrote in dollars and for whatever reason they give us this little portion right here in change, right, in cents. So we do need to change that so we'll move that decimal one, two places over and we'll fill that place in with a zero. So this first portion Oh, that just looks bad, doesn't it? <sighs> Would be 7.1, I don't really need that zero, 7.1 plus 0 0.06747 times X. Okay, since that one is per kilowatts, that means that's the one you're multiplying. And we are using this one if x is less than or equal to 1,200. Since it says up to 1,200 kilowatts. So then it says that they charge $88.06 plus, again, that 5.788 cents when you go above 1,200. So we will start with the 88.06. And for the record, this comes from if we were to find F of 1200. So if you took this one here and you plugged in 1200 into this X, 
you get this $88.06. So that's where that comes from. Plus, this many cents, so we'll have to change that decimal again. So move it one, two over, and add in that zero. So plus 0 0.05. 788. Now we can't just say X here because if you just put X here, then you're getting charged for, for this portion right here, no matter what your X is. What they say is that you're gonna get charged this above your 1200 kilowatts. So instead of just making that X, you will make that X minus 1200, since it's everything above. And then we will say if, X is greater than 1200. Okay, so that's my part A. That's me writing my functions. So then part B, find the monthly charge if 960 kilowatts are used. Well, which function am I using? Am I using this first function or the second one? And I'm using this one here because X is less than or equal to 1200. So we will do 7.1 plus 0 0.06747 times 960. Okay, type that in your calculator. Okay, you should have got 71.8712. But because we're wanting to know what the monthly charge is, we're talking about change, right? So this is going to be I'm out of room on here for my part C, so I'm just going to come up here. So part C, what is the monthly charge if we use 1580 kilowatts? Well, now I'm going to be using this one here because now my X is greater than 1200. So I've got 88.06 plus 0 0.05788 times 15, uh, how many, 1580 minus 1200. So put that in your calculator. You should have gotten 110.0544. And again, because we're talking about how much was that monthly charge, we're talking about money, we went around to the nearest cent. So that would be $110.05. Okay, sorry again that I couldn't make it to class to teach this lesson, but if you guys have any questions, please feel free to email me and then rewind and watch this video as many times as you need to um, on any of the given problems. Hope to see you guys back, um, or hope to see you guys again on Tuesday.